Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever and wherever you are, my friends. My name is Alex, and I'm here to teach you about buttons and button states in GDevelop. Thanks for joining me on the canvas. This is a blank project with nothing in it. Nothing has been changed yet. There's no scene variables or anything like that. There's nothing been added to the game. It's nice and blank. And I want to show you how quickly you can start getting started with buttons. Now, there are uh, for a variety of ways of making buttons, but I'm going to show you the simple version and then a more advanced version that is more flexible in my opinion. So we're going to go down here to add a new object and we're going to scroll down just a little bit to the user interface section and we're going to use a panel sprite button. It's a resizable button with customizable text. It's pretty straightforward. We just add a button. You click on one of these and add it to the game scene. Now we have this nice button that we can add that says button on it and if we double click on it we can see its property settings now i'm just going to call this white square for now but it has um it has a hover fade out duration so this is when you uh after you you leave the hover state how long does it take to fade out it has a offset if you need to for your text um, there's lots of padding and margin settings for your label which is a text so we can put a text um font type in here and then we can change the text of it we're going to change it from button let's say this is going to be our play button we can add an outline so in this case if we wanted to we could we could uh, wrap it in maybe white or something or add a drop shadow i'll just enable that to show you and then we have button states which are um titles for the different conditions for our, our state we have an idle state we have a hovered state we have a pressed state and then there's some image settings for those and a couple of options now we can digest that another time. I don't think that that's super important to over digest here. It's just these are where you'll go about edi editing each of those different settings for this one type of button. Now this button has no behaviors. So it's all baked into the object. But what you may not know is when you add certain objects in GDevelop, especially things that are already built into the scene object um, creator, if we go over here to our property manager on the top left, and then we look down on our extensions, it's added the panel sprite button extension. So what this extension does is effectively add this object type to our object list when we go to create one, except for it's reversed because it was made by GDevelop rather than a person. So sometimes when, a, when you add a external event it may add objects types new object types to your game scene or into your uh, not your game scene but in your object creation list now um this is great if you want a play button let's say in the bottom of your screen or uh, if you're developing some sort of menu now we can start controlling some things like our label and other variables inside of our scene events so let's say uh, actually if we preview our game scene now we have a button that lets us highlight over it we can click it and we can go back to an idle state and there's that that delay in the fade that we saw earlier so it has functionality but to add its functions uh, and to give it logic we have to go to our event sheet and we can press uh, add new event click on the condition click on the button specifically that we're trying to to work with and then we can change its sprite panel um, uh, properties here so we can check if it is clicked if it is hovered or idled or or what have you. And we can say, if is clicked, we want to do something. If it is clicked, we want to change our game scene. So we would just type scene. And then we could change the game scene. We could change the game scene. We'll currently only have one, which is the, me the menu that we're currently building. So we'll do that. Now, it won't look like anything special to you now if I preview this. Because effectively on click, we're reloading the same screen. It's loading over top of itself and shutting the other one down, but the button exists in the same location, so it doesn't really do anything, but you'll just have to trust me that that's working. So now that we've done a basic button, we may want to create our own types of buttons, and there's no real limit here on what we can do. So what we want to do is go to our project manager, go to our extensions, click the plus button, and we're gonna add a extension called button state and effect. So just type button, I've already done it, but I'll do it again, button. Oops, I accidentally clicked on that one. We want button states and effects by DAH and uh, Victress Games. So thanks guys for this. Um, 
Anyways, so this allows us to do all sorts of, of awesome things. We can change the size, the color, the animation, and object effects using this extension as well as it, it extends our object uh, and adds in new behaviors like pressed, clicked, hovered, and idle. So we're gonna add that to our game and we're gonna close out of this. So now we can create any object we want in our object list and add a behavior that is it makes it a button. So we can go in here and go to Sprite. So let's say we wanted to add a, a single um, image to our game. And we're going to call this uh, button zero. We're going to go to its behavior before we add a Sprite and add the object behavior of button state. So now that we have that, we can go back to our properties. We can add a animation and then we can add a Sprite. Now, rather than clicking on add a Sprite, we're going to click here on the drop down and choose from the asset store. We're just gonna use the planet in this case for a button. And so now if we hit apply and add this to our game world, I'm gonna scale it up just a little bit, holding shift to keep it scale. Uh, if not, it'll look like that. So hold shift to maintain its, uh, its size change. And now we have a button, but nothing happens. It's just, it has the behavior. Well, we have to extend its behavior over uh, in the scenes section. It doesn't come with all that pre-built in properties. Instead, we've added a behavior that allows us to add the conditions to it. So we go into the event, go to conditions, click on button, and now you'll see we have button states. And there's a little bit more going on here than the other one. I think this is a more robust tool, but it's a bit more advanced for people who want to make different types of buttons that aren't necessarily restricted to just a, 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 a standard button map or a rectangle with text in it. Um, of course, you could change those images and whatnot, but I think that this is a more flexible way of doing that. And again, we'll just click is clicked. So now they both have a is clicked condition. Um, and here we would also then we could just change the game scene. Now I want this to actually make it look like it's doing something. So what we're going to do is um, uh, I'm going to kind of create a, a little, I'm going to add a, a gap here uh, just by adding a, con a blank condition to separate these two from my own visual need. And we're going to double click on uh, what I want to do is make multiple conditions for this object. So we have an is, cl is click state and we want to then have a idle state. Now the other button has this pre built in, but we want this for our button, for our custom button. So we're going to check if it is idle. And then if it's clicked, if it's idle, we're going to change its size to, uh, and we'll just do scale and we'll set it to one. So when it's in idle mode, meaning nothing is on it, it's not being clicked, it's not being hovered over or anything like that, we'll set its scale to one. And then when it's clicked, we're going to set its scale to, um, let's say 0.85. And then we're going to create another state that and we're going to uh, go in here and do is hovered and we're going to change hovered to 1.25. So what will happen is when it's in idle state, it'll be at a standard scale. When it's clicked, it'll go down. But when it's hovered, it'll grow big. So we should see kind of this uh, light animation change. So if I go over it, it scales big. If I click on it, it'll shrink. And then, of course, because um, when I click on it, you'll see it kind of flicker maybe if the FPS will catch it. I'm not sure if it's catching on the recording or not, but there's this brief moment where it flickers and I can see the previous in image back here. Um, and, that, and it is showing that when we click on it, it's shrinking down now, but, but because um, we have a state that is hovered, right? It's trying to overwrite these. So I guess a better way of, of showing this to you is by removing the click and instead simply showing you that on hover and off simply like this, we have two different ways of showing that we're we're highlighting over something. Now, this is scaling from the top left. We could change that simply by moving the origin point of our object to the center. So one thing we can do is go to our point, change the origin to its center, roughly. Uh, we'll close this down, hit apply. We'll move the object back to its position. And now when it scales, it'll scale from the center. So now we have a more like a circular object that is scaling as we'd expect it to, um, rather than scaling from the top corner 
outward. So wherever the origin point is of your object, it'll scale from that position. But we're not done. We can even add this to a text object. Now it could be any type of object technically, and it can also be any type of text object. It doesn't have to be a bitmap or a regular text or BB text, but I'm gonna be using regular text. And we'll just call this text button zero. We'll call this one play, or in this case, let's do something different. We'll do continue. With the outline and shadow, you'll see that these are the same settings that were available within the white square object that we had added earlier. And that's just simply because it's a text object that's been added into that pre-made element. All of these features are already available separately inside of GDevelop. And if you know how to program and are interested in learning more about that, you can dive into GDevelop's backend and learn a little bit more about the scripting language and how to add these elements and make these pre-made objects that you can add to your object list so that it makes your development process easier. But those require uh, a, a knowledge of the extensions and of some additional programming. That's more advanced. We're going to leave that alone for this video. But anyways, we can go to our behavior and now add the same behaviors that we were looking for previously. So there's a button states behavior. We can add that in. Now we can drag this into our game scene. And simply by having it in, let's also copy this and paste it again. And we'll change the object from button to text. And we'll do it for button and text here. There we go. So now we should have the same behavior that we were expecting to see. And that's how you make buttons in GDevelop. There's a lot more that you can do here that I haven't touched on, but you should play around with it and use it for your own reasons. I wanted to thank those Ko-Fi or rather coffee supporters that I have. Because of you, this video was made possible. Thank you so much for supporting me. And if you like this video, maybe you'll consider supporting me too. Every dollar goes into making more content and adding pixel art and other game assets for the world to use. Remember, happy game making, and I'll see you in the next video.